Hello and welcome to Cruise Analysis. My name is Torsten Cruz. I am the president of Cruise Analysis and uh, for the last 25 years had the pleasure of doing simulations for the industry. If you are in the injection molding industry, you know injection molding is a very complex manufacturing technology that involves the part design, the polymer material, the mold design, the processing, the machine, as well as the process engineer. All of these functions have to really work together in harmony or in concert to be able to create and mold a high quality product. Here at Cruise Analysis, we often use DOE, injection molding simulations, to really verify the process capability of a part and a mold prior to actually building a mold. Let's take a simple example from uh, our portfolio of information we have. On the screen, you can really see two half, half shells of a grip mold. Uh, we can see a cold runner system and two subgates into the sides. And what's most important here is the flatness of the ceiling surface around the grip part. That really needs to be as flat as possible so that two halves really fit together. For this particular project, the customer requested a PC ABS material. And on screen, we just see a few uh, process conditions for this particular material. Uh, it is a 15 gram per 10 minute MFI material with um, a reasonable process window. As we know, polycarbonate ABS blends are amorphous materials. And in general, we, um, the material is, has a reasonable processing behavior. On screen, you can see a typical viscosity curves um, for this material. And we can tell on the bottom uh, x-axis is the shear rate, on the y-axis, the vertical axis is the viscosity. And basically meaning as higher we shear the material, as lower the viscosity will be. And as higher the temperature is, as lower the viscosity will be as well. The amorphous nature of materials is also very coolly described in the PVT curve. Um, this, these are typical PVT curves you can see on screen. Um, the lines sort of represent the individual pressures. The red line is zero pressure and blue line is basically 500 uh, um, bar or 50 megapascals. And then in 50 megapascal increments, we can tell that if the pressure goes up, in the molding cycle, meaning during the filling or packing process, the uh, um, specific volume will decrease. That means the density will go up. So, but it's a typical behavior that shows that amorphous materials have a very gradual packing and cooling behavior. Now let's set up our DOE strategy. As you may remember from one of our previous YouTube encounters, DOE, design of experiment, um, on screen you can tell that this is our DOE setup. It's a typical setup and in the top lines you can tell the DOE method, we have levels of two. What that basically means is that uh, we have uh, two uh, uh, values that determine the DOE window. You can tell a little further down in the factors section that we have level one and level two for the melt temperature, for the mold temperature, for the maximum packing pressure, and for the cooling time. So we have two levels. In level one, we can tell the melt temperature 220, mold temperature 40, max packing 55 megapascals, and cooling time seven seconds. In level two, we basically have the upper range, uh, melt temperature 260, mold temperature 80, max pack pressure is at 95 megapascals, which is 950 bar, which is close to 13, 14,000 PSI, just as a comparison. Cooling time max is 13. So we basically have two levels 
and four controlling factors. On the bottom, we can tell, okay, what's the quality factor we are trying to um, uh, run the DOE on? And in our case, it's the warpage in the Z displacement, and the Z displace displacement in our part is the flatness. On screen, we see now the resulting DOE table. From the two levels we have, with the four controlling factors, um, we set up an array of analyses uh, we have to go through to identify which one of these settings about melt temperature, mold temperature, packing pressure and cooling time will result in the least amount of warpage or the flattest part in the Z direction. Okay, here we to get you familiar with how the part is molded. On screen you can tell this is the filling melt front time just to for you to analyze okay this is how the part fills from the gate to both side both ends of the grip and uh, yeah without any significant challenges as we can tell okay okay here's the next step in our quick analysis of how the part is molded we what we call the packing molten core the packing molten core basically shows you how the material cools. Everything you see in translucent is frozen. Everything that's still blue is still molten. So, and on the top left, you can tell there's a time running. So the gate will freeze at about 10 seconds into the packing time. And um, then the material still has shows areas that are still molten. You can actually tell we have some pretty thick areas in some areas on the on each side of the grip and what will actually happen is as soon as the gate is frozen those areas continue to shrink and can cause sink marks they can maybe cause voids and they may be contributing to the overall flatness of this part based on the molding conditions the fill processing the packing, the cooling, um, the system will calculate a linear shrinkage behavior. On screen, we see the total displacement magnified 10 times. In reality, the part will shrink, as you can tell, maximum 035 millimeters in certain areas. Obviously, now, the, how can we depict this between the individual components? Is? The individual components, is what those are, are the X, Y, and Z uh, deflection behaviors in, uh, in, in millimeter. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here you go. This is the Z direction. That's the direction of the, in the length of this part. You basically can tell that the red area is moving towards the center location of the gate by about 0.33 millimeters. The blue is also moving towards the center of the grip by about 0.34 millimeters. So the entire part is, is shrinking in the X direction by about 0.67 millimeter. That includes the natural material shrinkage, of course. Now let's take a look at what happens in the y direction. The y direction is the width of the part. And you again can see blue and red areas. And you can see the scale on the left side, plus and minus 0.16 millimeters. So that basically tells you the really dark blue and the really dark red areas just shrink inward just a little bit more as the center uh, region where the gate is located. So the part, these, these sections move in a little bit uh, uh, more than the center and therefore the part warps slightly. And here's the Z direction, the most important direction for us because that's the direction, the flatness, that is important to us for the assembly of the part. And we can tell that we have a positive of one point and a 0.11 millimeter and a negative of 0.11 millimeter. And if you look at the uh, mating surface, the flatness of the mating surface of this part, it seems like it is pretty, pretty flat. Let's evaluate through DOE. 
Okay, on screen we can actually now see the flatness of this part. There's a function that we can tell to the software, okay, display what the flatness is of a surface that I have uh, picked. And in this case, we picked the flatness of that entire surface um, that is important to us, the assembly uh, um, surfaces for the two grips where we mount them together. And we see here flatness, uh, it's hard to, to see perhaps, but in that gray box in the middle top, there it says flatness is 0 0.104 millimeter. And again, on the right, we see the DOE table. From all of these analyses, um, there is one particular run that gives us the most flatness of the part. This is a typical DOE output from our analysis we do in cruise, uh, cruise analysis. This is a quality response. Basically, you can tell on the bottom, we have the four variables, our four um, factors that we have chosen to identify what, uh, which one is most important for the flatness of the part. On the left, we see the melt temperature. It varies between 220 and 260 degrees. This quality response basically tells us, and if you see the vertical axis, there is a, a range between 0.111 and on the top 0.126 millimeter on the left side. <clears throat> this is the flatness tolerance. So it tells us the melt temperature at 220 gives us the flattest part. If we move over to the right to the mold temperature in blue, it basically tells us, well, the higher mold temperature at 80 degrees will give us the flattest part. The line is bending down towards the right, so the flattest, lowest Z deflection number. Now look at the next one. There's the packing pressure. The green line, this has a steep angle, and it really tells you that at a high packing pressure, we can achieve the, the, the lowest uh, uh, shrinkage and therefore the flattest part. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? What is not so obvious is the one all the way to the right, which is the cooling time between, remember, the low cooling time of 7 and the high cooling time of 13. So why is it a, a apparent that at a lower cooling time they get a flatter part? Well, remember uh, what happens in the molding cycle. During the cooling phase, if we have a long cooling time, we can actually uh, create molded in stresses and the mold works like a fixture. Now when the part comes out of the mold and ha it has a lot of molded in stress, then um, this, fixture, this fixture of the mold is, is not longer there and the molded in stress, if it's high, it can warp the part, part a little bit more than under a shorter cooling time. Because in a shorter cooling time, the material is not um, molded, has maybe not so much molded in stress and therefore does not have to relieve so much molded in stress when it's outside of the mold. And here's another typical topographical um, result we can generate from our DOE analysis at Cruise Analysis. This is a typical um, result that we like to show. And what you see here is uh, a, a, a three-prong approach on the y-axis. So that means you can tell this from 8 to 12. You see these numbers here on the top left? That's the cooling time, from basically from 7 to 13, you may remember. Um, also on the top, we see the x component, which is the melt temperature. From in the corner, in the center, it's 220, going to the right and lower right the, to the maximum 260. The same values are on the bottom, as you can tell, in this array. It's almost like a like this box. Yeah, on the bottom you see X and Y again. It's the same value. But what you here see is also the vertical lines. These are the Z direction, <clears throat> and that's uh, reflecting our flatness. So these topographical result images, you can interpret that the flattest part is basically, look at the range on the left, 0.12 millimeters is the bluest area. And it coincides with all the other information that we've seen, shown you before, that at the highest melt temperature, uh, 
and the lowest cooling time in combination we get the lowest flattest part that's what DOE is all about it is a virtual tool a virtual analysis to identify which process parameters are most uh, important for a particular quality factor in our case it was the flatness very valuable tool that we use all the time here at cruise analysis of course as we mentioned before injection molding is a very complex behavior and that means you have to have knowledge and the part designers the mold designers and the process engineers all of them should understand the injection molding business just a little bit better and therefore we created cruise training that will uh, uh, teach you and give you knowledge the cause and effect behaviors in injection molding thank you for your attention hope to hear from you soon bye bye